Hello everyone, my name is Thad Minnick. I'm here to talk to you about making art as a career. And throughout this whole presentation, I'm going to be uh, dropping in pictures of tattoos that I've done and some video clips of the tattoo process. That way you don't have to look at me the whole time. Um, but you'll get to see lots of examples of like the work I do, the paintings I've done, the tattoos I've done, and some other things. So uh, let's get to it. Let me start by saying I've been tattooing over 25 years at this point. I have been doing artwork the bulk of my life. I can't remember a time when I wasn't drawing or painting or doing something creative. With choosing to make art a career, you have to go in knowing you're going to work very hard at it. You need to create every day. You need to draw something. You need to make something. You need to continually be pushing yourself to create, to do better than you did last time, to push whatever skill set you're trying to develop into a living, if that's what you're choosing. It's a very daunting task and the creative process is a strange one. You really need to understand that there's gonna be ups and downs, ebbs and flows of creativity. There, there'll be days where the ideas roll in, take advantage of that because there'll be days that you'll have nothing. And being an artist, you're, everyone struggles with that. I don't know a single artist that doesn't struggle with that at some point in their career. You need to train your brain into thinking of different ways to come up with something new, new ideas, what your next project may be. Everybody these days has a quality phone of some sort with a camera on it. Now, even that can be used to create things, take pictures, you know, have a, have a blog, something, vlog, whatever you're doing, turn it into something creative, have a purpose while you're doing those things. There's nothing wrong with doing that in, as a creative outlet. And plenty of people have turned those into careers. Use your resources that you have available to you. Your camera is, it's a valuable thing that you can use. It's super important to build a visual library, whether it be in your brain, in storage somewhere, you need a visual library. Use the camera on your phone to take references of things you may potentially use in the future as a project. You don't wanna use Google all the time. Google is something everyone uses and if you continually use that, what will happen is everything that you do will look like everything everybody else is doing. So really try and find new inspiration. If you find something interesting, take a picture of it. It's that easy. Something that I see a lot is younger artists always want to find their style and they're trying to find their thing. And whether that is in drawing, tattooing, whatever, the more you do artwork, the more you'll see that that thing will find you. You just need to create things and do a lot of it. And what will happen is that style will develop. Going into develop a very specific style is a hard, it's a hard road to do that. You almost need it to find you. So you just try a few things. You try things that you like. Once you find that you like things, you'll want to do more things. And the more you do it, the more you'll start seeing patterns develop. And that's where a style starts to happen, but forcing it is never good. And it's, it, it's, it's a tough road, but once you get it, like you'll see that happening. And it's good to have a style. Don't be afraid to break the style, but it's good to have one. You don't ever want to get caught up in one for long periods of time because it will feel, it'll start to become monotonous, but that's why you need to have hobbies or 
other avenues of artwork to pursue. And that's why it's good, like I said, to explore other things as you're having a career in art, try and be as versatile as possible because that will also make your earning potential far better because if one market slows down, you'll be able to slide over into this one a little easier, especially if you're proficient at it already because you've been doing it as a hobby. And I think that that's, a, that's, always, a, that's always a safe way to go in art. Diving headfirst into one thing and one thing only, you can do it. Plenty of people have made careers doing it, but it's a lot riskier. So it's good to have it's good to have a few things that you're you're pretty good at. One really good thing, whether it be drawing, painting, whatever. Initially you're going to focus all your energy into developing a skill set that is going to be what's going to make you your money. For myself, that was tattooing. And so I focused on getting really, really proficient in tattooing. Whether it be tattooing, painting, sculpting, photography, video editing, anything. Anything that's has a where you need an artistic edge. After you develop the main set of skills, what you need to start doing is branching out. I found that branching out into other areas of art, it really helped me develop new skills and become a more versatile artist. Because if you're not being versatile, you can really put yourself in a corner you tend to start doing a lot of the same projects. People will like you for a certain style, and that's great. But what can happen is you'll start to hate that style and you'll get bored with that style. So you really need to branch out and start getting into other things. For example, myself, I, I always drew, and once I was good at drawing, I got into tattooing and after I became a skilled tattooist, I started diving into painting more than I ever had before, before it was recreational. Now I use painting as a passive way to make an income. I'll usually have them sitting around the shop and people will look at them, see them and if they like them, they'll inquire about buying them. Something else I've done is art shows. And when I was preparing for an art show, I was very specific about what I was trying to paint. I wasn't painting for fun then, I was painting for a task and I had a very specific goal in mind in a number of paintings I wanted to do. Those were able to further my career. People took notice that not only was I a tattooist, but I was able to explore other mediums, which appeals to a lot of people. Documenting your artwork in the world we currently live in is super valuable to an upcoming artist, anybody who's trying to make a career out of it. It makes people feel more attached to what you are doing. If you're showing a, a in progress picture of that, people who like what you're doing and who see what you're doing can recognize that you're putting a lot of work into something and they become connected to it because they see the progress, even though they're not doing it, they're seeing the progress and they're becoming attached to that project. And that inherently adds value to what you are doing. And when you're done with that, they may choose to want that specifically because they, they feel partially attached to it. And that's a great way to develop clients. You aren't even aware you're doing it a lot of the time, but that is what's happening. With tattooing, it happens a lot. If a client sees sketches early on in the process, they see that I'm putting in the work. You need to let people see your things though. You don't want to be an artist that 
does a bunch of work and then doesn't like it and rips it up or throws in the fire or throws in the trash. You don't want to be one of those artists. They're out there and that's not doing anything for the world. Even if what you're doing isn't up to your standards, that's good to be self-critical, but you need to show other people so you can get some input. Input's good. That's why it's good to seek out the opinion of people who are working in the same mediums as you are. Don't be afraid to seek people out that inspire you. There's a lot of people out there doing a lot of great things and it's really good to create art for a living. It's even if you're doing it as a hobby, it's a great thing. It's good to want to try and make a living doing it, but it shouldn't always be the end goal with art. Most of the people that go into the art world with the intention of getting rich or making a lot of money, it never happens. And if it does, they're usually producing a type of art that isn't as creative or it just doesn't feel as genuine as it should. And that's all fine and good if you're okay with that. But if you're creating art for art's sake, you should really enjoy it and not just look at it as a way to make a dollar. It's a great way to make a dollar if you're approaching it with respect. Because when you don't, it, it shows. There's a soul or... There's a soul, there's something that gets lost in, in having bad motivations behind artwork. When you see it, you know it. Like, especially after you've been in the art world for a while, you can see pieces that you know that somebody put their heart and soul in. And when that happens, that's the piece of art that speaks to a lot of people. Art is taking something of little or no value and putting your skills to it and making it into something of great value. And it really is a special thing and that's why it should be respected. And that value doesn't necessarily have to be money. It's great when it is, but when you make something or create something and it's appreciated by others, especially when it's very appreciated and they respect what you've done, that is alchemy. That's taking something that was nothing and turning it into something. I'd like to just say thanks for watching this presentation and hopefully you got something out of it. A career in art is a great path to go down if you're willing to work hard. That's the last time I'm going to say work hard. Uh, if Hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you heard any strange sounds during the whole entire video, my dog's sitting right here beside me snoring away. So um, hopefully she didn't snore too loud. But I guess uh, I'll let you guys ask me some questions now. Thanks a lot.